Once you have mastered the eight MDGs, which we introduced in the previous video, it's time to level up. Vika has specified some further things that we need to know about each goal, their purpose and reasons why they are important. You may also come across targets of each MDG, which can help greatly in answering SAC and exam questions. So firstly, what is the purpose of the MDGs in general? We could say that it is to improve global health for present and future generations. From the United Nations Progress Report from 2014, the MDGs were a pledge to uphold the principles of human dignity, equality and equity and free the world from extreme poverty. The purpose of each individual goal is not too much more than this combined with the self-explanatory purpose of that individual goal. For example, the first MDG, Eradicate Extreme Poverty and Hunger, aims to uphold the principles of human dignity, equality and equity and free the world from extreme poverty, plus eradicate extreme hunger. The targets of each MDG can also be used here, but we will look at them in a moment. Each MDG was obviously constructed for a purpose. There would be no point having a goal that was not needed or not achievable. We can assume then that each goal had some kind of reason for selection. Let's focus on MDG 1, Eradicate Extreme Poverty and Hunger. Here, we can use some background information to explain why each goal has been included in the MDGs. For example, 5.5 million children die each year from malnutrition-related causes. Extreme hunger and poverty results in a severe poverty cycle, that is, a child born in a developing country has a 40% chance of living in extreme poverty. Chronic hunger leads to a whole range of detrimental effects, including a lack of education, malnutrition, stunted growth, and poor mental and social health outcomes. So these statistics alone seem like reason enough for inclusion of MDG1. Background information on each MDG can be found beneath this video. Don't think that Vika won't ask about why an MDG is important either. This question is from the 2013 Vika exam, reading, provide one reason why Millennium Development Goal 4 is important. So that leaves us with only the targets to discuss. Now, the targets are often the most difficult things to remember. They are quite specific, full of statistics, and there are a lot of them. For example, the first target of the first MDG is as follows. Halve between 1990 and 2015, the proportion of people whose income is less than $1.25 US per day. A list of each goal's targets is also available below this video, but they are very handy in answering particular types of questions. This question is from the 2010 VCAR exam. Here, we need to explain how a non-governmental organisation could help to achieve MDG4, reduce child mortality. To demonstrate a depth of understanding, this is a great question to use the targets of that goal. It just so happens that MDG4 only has one target, so let's focus on that. The target is as follows. Reduce by two-thirds between 1990 and 2015 the under-5 mortality rate. So in our response, we could emphasise how the non-governmental organisation, let's call it generic NGO for now, could contribute to this. For example, generic NGO could implement a sponsorship program where people can financially contribute to sponsoring a rural community. The funds from this initiative could be used to focus on there being a range of nutritious foods available for children to consume. This would likely result in fewer cases of malnutrition and extreme hunger. As malnutrition and extreme hunger heavily contribute to cases of child mortality, this initiative of generic NGO would likely contribute to a reduction of child mortality. Note here that a large range of answers would be acceptable. In the next video, we'll look at how to analyze MDGs from a case study. Bye for now and happy studying.